In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The monk, Father Augustine, exhausted from having walked over 2,000 miles from Rome, having crossed over the Alps by foot, and with a rapidly decreasing amount of food left for him and his 40 companions, began to have second thoughts. He began to have serious fears about continuing his journey to our country. And as he passed through the towns of southern France, he heard rumours about England. He heard worrying stories about the English. They will not listen to you. They will reject you and probably put you to death. And then Augustine probably started to look at his own weaknesses. His knowledge of the local language of England was really rather rusty. He wasn't a preacher. He wasn't a scholar. He was a monk. How could he make a difference where others had failed so miserably? But St. Augustine is famous precisely because he overcame these fears, precisely because when he wavered, he conquered these doubts and continued his journey. And then he found, to his surprise, it wasn't a martyrdom or complete indifference that awaited him. In fact, there were plenty of souls just waiting to hear the saving news of the Catholic faith. In today's Gospel, we hear the starting point of St. Augustine's mission to England. It is the command of our Lord, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them and teaching them all that I have commanded you. What powerful words of our Lord. They are words that change history. They are words that have changed our world. They are words that have yet led young men across the centuries to drop everything, to abandon all the promises of worldly successes and to travel to unknown lands through jungles and deserts and mountains, to risk their lives in order to fulfill these words of their master, in order to save souls and to spread the reign of Jesus Christ. The biggest danger for us in hearing all this stuff about St. Augustine coming to our country, is that we might think that our Lord's words only apply to men like him, for missionaries, for those who leave their homes to spread the true faith in far-off lands. But how far from the truth that is? Let me make this clear. Our Lord's final words, the words that he said just as he ascended to heaven, are meant for you. They are meant for us here in the year 2021. They are meant for every single person in this church. We have a duty to get with this program, to be the ones who pass on the true faith to others, to make disciples. Often when we think of Catholics, we think of two types, practicing Catholics and lapsed Catholics. And if you had to define what makes someone a practicing Catholic as opposed to a lapsed one, what kind of things would you say? There's, there's some obvious things. Practicing Catholic goes to Holy Mass at least every Sunday. Practicing Catholic goes to confession at least a couple of times a year. Practicing Catholic puts time into prayer every day. Practicing Catholic tries his best to keep the commandments and goes to confession if he messes up. All that is true, but we need to add to that list. A practicing Catholic shares his faith with others. Our Lord gives very few direct commands in the Gospels to his disciples. The most famous one is at the Last Supper. This is my body given up for you. Do this in memory of me. With these words, he made it clear that we need to gather for Holy Mass to receive his holy body in Holy Communion. In today's Gospel, make disciples of all nations. We hear a command just as important, just as significant, significant as do this in memory of me. If you stop going to Holy Mass or just go every other week or something, you've become a lapsed Catholic. But if you stop sharing your faith or you stop asking God to help you to share the true faith, then the truth is you have become a lapsed Catholic just as much as someone who's given up going to confession, given up on daily prayer. And the frightening reality for us all is lapsed Catholics are not going to make it to heaven. Heaven is for those who stand firmly and fully in the faith of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. So this is serious stuff. 
we're not talking about an optional extra. But I thank God for that, because if evangelization was optional, no one would have come to England. If evangelization was optional, no one would have converted my ancestors. No one would have brought me or you to the true faith. And we would still be loaded with all of our sins, both original sin and personal sins. We would be unforgiven. And after death, we would have no hope of eternal life, only eternal separation from God in hell. And now, we need to show the same concern for those around us, those in our families, our workplaces, our schools, the clubs we go to, our next door neighbours. We need to realise that they need eternal life and that we are the ones who have been asked to share with them the parachute that will save them, the vaccine that they need and which they perhaps don't even realise their need of. I started by talking about St. Augustine overcoming his fears. We're in the same position as him when it comes to fear. It, it's fear above all that stops us sharing our faith. Fear can make us self-censor. And so that when we are with certain people, we use a different way of speaking. We don't say, may God rest his soul when we hear of a death or God help him when we hear of a tragedy. We no longer bless ourselves and pray before eating meals. We perhaps even cover up the fact that we attend Holy Mass on Sunday and that our faith is the central aspect of our life. Fear brings self-censorship and fear also makes us feel incapable of the task of sharing our faith. But we need to overcome these fears just as our holy patron Saint Augustine. He overcame his fears, his genuine fears, and as a result, brought salvation to generations and generation of our countrymen. I think we could say that there are three types of fear that we can get. Uh, it can be, who should I speak to? What should I say to them? How will they respond? So it's who, what and how. They're the three types of fears in evangelization. Let's look at each. Who should I speak to? The first thing we need to do is start, start praying for our non-Catholic friends and asking God for his help and guidance and how we should go about in approaching each person we know. In that prayer, God will give you the grace to overcome your fear about who to speak with and he will show you the right approach to take. For some people, this will be subtle and long term, but for other people, the approach will need to be direct and full on. And even for those we don't get to speak with, we still have the, uh, the opportunity to offer the witness of a good life and overcome any temptation to self-censorship in our behavior. What should I say to them? This is the big source of fear. An easy way to overcome this is to share something of your own life, talking naturally about how our Lord has helped you, how your life has been changed through the Catholic faith through the miracles of the saints, through the apparitions of Our Lady, through our Lord's forgiveness. Don't be too worried about questions coming back to you. If they come, you don't know the answer, just say with humility, I don't know the answer to that, but I can get it for you. And then go on the internet and find the answers to those questions. Every question about the Catholic faith has been asked and answered before, and you can get the answers that your friends need. I heard about a 10 year old boy the other day who was a great evangelizer at his uh, secular school among his non-Catholic friends. What he used to do, he used to say to the other kids, what are you doing to save your soul? Um, imagine that being a 10 year old and some other boy coming up and, and asking you seriously, what are you doing to save your soul? The, the lad obviously didn't have big arguments or complicated theology. But the question got his friends thinking, and that was the starting point to the last fear. That's how would they respond? In many ways, this is the least important fear because we share our faith, not because we're expecting big results, but because it is a duty the Lord has given us. I remember when I joined the Legion of Mary um, years ago now, uh, the first time I, I did the visiting door to door. I was told by my uh, co-worker, 
If we were doing this for the results, we would have given up years ago. We don't do this for the results. We do this because our Lord has given us this duty and it is an honour to be picked by him to be the one to share his truths with others. The worst that can happen is that you might get mocked or dismissed or put down, but in receiving any fallback, you can be confident that a great reward is waiting for you in heaven. There have been renovations at this church of St. Augustine's recently. They finished, but we shouldn't get complacent and think, We preserved our church for another generation. Job done. The roof is fixed. If we don't start sharing our faith, then all we will have preserved is a museum. The whole thing will have been a waste of time and money. Now we have to fill this church to fill it with souls. Overcome your fears and make disciples of all nations. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.